I'm Amy Guerin, the Director of Brand and Digital Strategy with AOCS. And I'm here today um, with Seth Pulfus from Natec. Um, and on the phone with us is Curtis Shoemaker, a process development engineer and product leader with Natec. So we're really looking forward um, to learning about the M4E magnet technology today. Um, there will be time for questions. Should you have any questions, you can put those in the questions panel of your control panel in the webinar system, and those will be addressed at the end of the presentation. So thanks everyone again for joining us. And Seth, I will turn it over to you. Okay, perfect. So I'm just sharing my screen. Amy, you can confirm that my screen is available. Or you're seeing. It is. looks great. Okay. We're ready. Okay. Very good. Well, thanks, Amy. I appreciate it. I'm Seth Paulfus. I'm the uh, North, uh, North American sales manager for the Natec Network here in the U.S. And we're actually really excited to be able to present our M4E technology. Uh, it's something that we've been working on now for over a year, and uh, we've, we're now excited to be able to introduce the technology to the U.S. and international market. So the basic overview of the presentation today, I'd like to just explain our, our ownership and how we're, we're organized. So we're part of the Hockland family. Um, the Hockland is, is one of the uh, uh, European's largest cheese producers. We were founded, the Hockland family uh, group was founded in 1927. We, our, our parent company actually produces a, a variety of different types of cheeses uh, in Europe. And so we're essentially the engineering support arm for our Hawkland uh, family over in Europe. So we produce cream cheese, we produce natural sliced cheese, salad dressing cheese, uh, processed cheese is also a big component of our business. And we've also recently started up a, a vegan cheese type business as well. So I think the interesting thing is we're owner operators. So all the equipment we produce and manufacture, we actually are using it inside our plants, inside our facilities. Okay. So our locations for the Natec network, again, we're the engineering arm. Uh, we're located in, our main location is located in Heimenkirk, Germany. We have a location in Melbourne, Australia, which is our Gold Peg city area. And then also our North American location is located in Pewaukee, Wisconsin, which I am based out of. So with regards to Melbourne, Melbourne is our, our, our main producers of, of cooking and processing equipment. So we produce continuous and batch type uh, uh, cooking equipment out of our Melbourne, Australia facility. In our Heimenkirk, Germany location, we're actually tied or we're, we're right actually next to our Hawkland production facility. So inside our, our facility, we're able to essentially work very closely with Hawkland. We produce all of the Natec equipment there. And we also have real world testing conditions, which we can actually work with and test our equipment as well. So as of 2020, most people put uh, an asterisk by 2020 with regards to that uh, uh, the COVID, but 2020 for us was actually a very exciting year. We were actually in the US market able to move into a larger facility. We were able to put in an actual R&D test facility. So uh, hopefully soon uh, before the end of the year, early, uh, January next year, we'll actually have R&D test equipment uh, along with the M4E technology we're talking about today to be able to test and prove out the technology right here in the U.S. as well. So in the Pewaukee location, we have sales service and our spare parts and also R&D test center. So really what we do is, is a wide variety of different products. We start from anywhere from uh, soups and sauces to uh, processed cheese, uh, slice on slice, shreds, uh, cubes. So uh, quite a, a, a variety of, of, of products that we actually have that, we're, that we currently work with. 
with us, our, we're, uh, we're an engineering type company, so we realize that there, we have a process which we call our bench engineering. So our bench engineering process is essentially, it, it's, a, it's a value chain type of, of process where we start with the basic concept and then we, we work with the, the customer throughout the whole life cycle of that process and uh, uh, up until uh, installation and uh, uh, running of the equipment, then we also help service the equipment. So there's a full life cycle value chain that we work with the customers on to help develop the product and also installation and also um, uh, startup and everything like that. So that's a little bit about us. Let's actually get into the M4E technology. So the M4E technology is really what we call our magnet dispersion and emulsion technology, okay? So really what the interesting thing with this particular technology is we've, we've worked with and developed a, 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 mixing, a new innovative mixing technology where essentially what we have is a, a product flow and then we have a break. Exit the break, there's actually a permanent uh, magnetic uh, magnet there that uh, as we pump and pressure uh, run product through that, that break, there's actually a, a dispersion and uniform mixing that takes place inside that field magnetic field. So the interesting takeaway with this particular device is there's, there's no mechanical shear. There's no energy required for this device. It's very fast and efficient and it's, and it's, it's CIPable and we're also in the final stages of working on dairy 3A sanitary, sanitary standards as well for this particular unit. So really from our standpoint, the, the sky's the limit with M4E. It's a very uh, a simple, fast and efficient process and really anywhere where you're using a mechanical high shear uh, pump, there is an opportunity for the M4E uh, technology for us to look at. Uh, as anyone familiar with more of a mechanical high shear technologies, there's a lot of uh, 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 maintenance required with regards to seals and motors and shafts. There's also a, a utility uh, requirement to run that power, you know, inside the plant. So from our standpoint, it's a, it's a fairly low cost unit where we're able to run either continuous or, or batch with this particular product. And with, because we're not using any high shear uh, on this product, we can actually run particulates. We can run particulates up to three millimeters without breaking them down. In comparison, if you're, if you're running some sort of a particulate through a high shear pump, there's a lot of potential for uh, damage of that product as it goes through the uh, it goes through the high shear pump. So let's look at the actual uh, the the cap capabilities of the M4E technology. So the first capability is actually for making emulsions. So the the technology was first developed and they and, and worked with making a cosmetic hand cream type products. We looked at that technology and we thought that would be, you know, a lot of the products that we work with here in the U.S. and in the food type products are can be somewhat viscous, can be uh, uh, requirements of trying to, to essentially make an emulsion. Uh, uh, so this particular application works very well for making emulsions. The other the other option we have is is hydrating and dissolving and dispersing powders. So we can actually use this technology to bring in powder to liquid type dispersion so we can you know essentially hydrate powders and 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 uniformly mix powders into a water or a viscous type solution and then the other option we have is is dilution of viscous liquids so we can bring two two liquids together to essentially mix and and or emulsify if, if required uh, as well so the, the actual technology, the setup and size. So again, what we're looking at here is there's a, a flow through a essentially a venturi. As that product breaks through the venturi, there's a field magnet there. The field magnet essentially helps us to organize and disperse the, uh, the products more uniformly through that, that mixture, okay? So this particular unit can be sized for uh, different flow rates and different production requirements as well. So it's fully, scalable okay and really the the unit itself is fully enclosed there's a, a a a essentially a stainless steel jacket around the field magnet so it's a 
uh, it's designed to be in production environments. So from the standpoint of how it works, well, the, the basic principle is we're trying to create disruption and we the way we create disruption is we, we pump under pressure and flow uh, through a venturi, which essentially disrupts the product. As the product, product is disrupted, there's actually a, a magnet at the right at the exit of that venturi that allows that product to essentially collapse and come back together. As it collapses and comes back together, that Lorenz force is is used to help shuffle and kind of organize the uh, the products to a, a a good consistency, a uniform mixture. So really, the the turbulent the Lorenz force is is really the uh, also helps us in this unit. It essentially creates the perfect environment to help us kind of mix and shuffle uh, uh, the atoms and the molecules back into a uniform mixture. So really the result is, is very effective mixing, very good hydration and dispersion of powders, and also making a good emulsion and strong without uh, uh, you know breaking the, the molecules down. So again, because we're not using a mechanical shear device or mixing device, we're able to keep the the, uh, the the products in solution and not damage the products as well as, as as if we were using something mechanical. So the magnet technology, uh, we have a couple different things to show you. So what we have here is an emulsion, a 67% fat uh, emulsion. It's a mayonnaise uh, emulsion. We're using a high shear mixing process. What we have here is a, your more traditional method of making emulsion. Uh, uh, making mayonnaise. And what we have here is, is uh, the actual M4E process. So if you take a look at your existing uh, high shear mix process on the left and compare it to the actual M4E process on the right, you can see the, the actual smaller uh, fat globules, more even dispersion, and actually we've, we've seen a higher uh, emulsion stability with the use of the M4E, uh, M4E technology when compared to a high shear mixing process. We can also take a look at with regards to gel stability. So we can uh, we can take a look at the actual gel as we're running the gel and, and hydrating the gel through an M4E type unit. The actual uh, gel stability or the functionality of the gel is actually uh, improved. So it's also important that it's it's you know we're we're adding value to the products, but we also want to make sure that all the products that we're including in our recipes are being used and fully utilized. So really. To, 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 to gain the most functionality of our ingredients is, is really important from our standpoint because it, it does cost a certain amount of time and effort from our end to put the ingredients in. So we want to make sure we're fully have the full benefit of that particular uh, ingredient. So the magnet technology and application. So really what what we have here is essentially a powder dispersion process. So this is a, a, a potentially a, a batch process. So we have location located here, uh, a, a, a essentially a, a hopper or a tank, and then we have a recirculation through the actual M4E unit. So in that recirculation, we're able to add uh, powder through the Venturi head. So as the, uh, the, the, as the, the, uh, the water and the slurry are recirculated, we're ab able to add and hydrate powder through the, the venturi. And really the, the benefit that we found with using the powder, adding powder through the M4E venturi is uh, really the, it prevents any of the, the dry clumping or what we call lumps or fish eyes from forming. So this technology has been very uh, efficient at adding dry powders to a liquid solution uh, to the point where we're, we're now using this technology for such as like pancake batters to fully hydrate and mix the pancake batters because of the potential problems with uh, fish eyes and powder and, and clumping. So it's definitely helped uh, uh, to produce a better, uh, a, a more robust pancake batter mixture as well. So at the end of the day, our overall goal is a stable, lump-free product, homogeneous dispersion, and really a perfectly hydrated powder as well. So I have a, a video here of the actual pectin concentration. Let me just see if we can uh, put that video on. So 
So in this particular video, this is an actual picture of some of the lab equipment we've tested on. So we have an actual uh, R&D skid where we have a hopper. And uh, what we're showing here is the actual Venturi M4E magnet itself. So as we recirculate the product, it recirculates back into uh, it, its essential hopper. So inside the tank, there's, there's actually a, a, a agitator mixer. So we have powder feeding. Now keep in mind, this is an R&D unit. So this particular unit, it's, it's a little bit more manual, but we control pressure. And then we also control the flow rate through the R&D unit. And those are some critical variables to be able to control. So you can see the powder being added to the process as that powder is added through the venturi. And you can see the one pass valve and where this is critical is, is on a continuous process where the product is fully hydrated. So you can see as we're pumping that one pass that the product itself is fully hydrated and there's no, uh, uh, no lumps or any fish eyes through there. So very efficient way to essentially hydrate the, uh, the product and, and prevent uh, uh, fish eyes or lumps from forming. Okay. So in this particular application, we're, we're showing, it, it can, you know, essentially a one pass, but you can also recirculate it through and then also pump it to, to another process system for further processing. So, so from that end, we are able to from that end, we were able to look at the pectin uh, mixing and, uh, and, and the process there. So we'll now go into the, the mayo process. So mayo is really, you know, an oil and water emulsion. So basically what we have is we have an oil receptor we have an actual water and emulsion receptor, and then we have a pump. And as we pump that product, we introduce oil through the M4E magnet, and that also helps us with regards to making a, a good stable emulsion. So the water and the powders are dissolved first, the oil is slowly added in, the vinegar and flavor is added at the end of the process, and then the, uh, the M4E technology is used to help us fully uh, emulsify the the product so let me show you the video as well so again what you can see here is our m4e production skid so it's an r d test unit so you can see the oil and powder dis, uh, dosing system again we have that same mixing tank here we have the actual magnet assembly that uh, the product is you know, uh, pumped through. So again, you can see on this R&D skid that we have just a manual powder feeding through the actual venturi. So you can see the actual process where we're hydrating the powder first. Now we're actually starting to bring in the oil to be able to add oil to the system and essentially emulsify and, uh, and make mayonnaise through the process. So, uh, this particular system is set up for more of a batch type of recirculation. So again, during the process, we control the, the pressure and flow rate through the actual magnet itself. So from our end, you, you can, uh, the final steps of the process is add the, the actual vinegar to the, the actual main, mayonnaise. And then as we get close to the final product, the other interesting thing is because we're, we're not using mechanical shear, uh, we can also add inclusions. So the inclusions can be uh, herbs or ingredients as well, and we can also see that as well. So, so really, we're, we've been very, uh, very quite pleasantly surprised and, and happy with the, with the results that we're seeing. We're making some very unique stable blends and, and here's where we're able to add the particulates as well it's another bone uh, added uh, benefit of the m4e system is it will also help mix and disperse and then because of the we're not adding mechanical shear where we can add 
the small particulates to help, uh, you know, in, increase or add value uh, to the product or flavor components to the actual product itself. So here you see just the final um, uh, mayonnaise mayo blend with with the actual particulates added to the uh, the products itself. So you can see a wide wide variety of different types of of mayo that we were able to produce, and really the the the, the interesting thing is being able to add the uh, 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 the inclusions as well. So. So from our end. Being able to test the actual concept is, is very key. So we do have currently right now a, a R&D test unit located in Heimenkirk, Germany. And then the interesting thing that we'll be able to be able to provide for the U.S. and North American customers is we'll have an R&D test unit available uh, uh, beginning uh, of early next year, late this year, early next year. So. M4E has, has been, uh, there's just a lot of really unique, really cool applications. I, I think as we move forward, our food and our products are becoming fairly, fairly highly engineered type products. Okay. So from our end, just because we are cheese producers, we've worked a lot with regards to analog or dry powder type cheese blends. So this is a particular application where we've essentially started and made a, a mozzarella uh, uh, an analog type mozzarella, which means, you know, basically starting with all dry powders, starting with the powder hydration in the M4E, and then essentially we mix the ingredients and then we can feed them in through a, our cooker and then the actual product is run through a finisher, which helps develop the, lo the, the longer fibers, which we know from a, a mozzarella standpoint. So this particular unit can be incorporated into existing technology you know streams so that we're able to enhance the current process and, and and try to ultimately make a better product as well okay so from our end we're really seeing the uh, the sky is the limit so we do appreciate your time uh today from the discussion standpoint but we 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 see a lot of potential for soups and spreads and and, and or shakes type of, of products uh, vegan and plant-based type products, cheese-like products, definitely, I think, an opportunity if you're mixing or blending or emulsifying. That's uh, something that we, we feel is a, is a very much a strength for the M4E type unit. Cream cheese, lots of different cream cheese-like products that I think we can produce through the unit as well. Uh, even also with uh, more of, a, we say, analog or more of a, uh, adding more dry ingredients or dry powders. We discussed the uh, pancakes and waffles. That's definitely an opportunity anywhere where you're seeing lumping or, or clumping of product where you're trying to achieve a uniform mix. That's a, a very good, uh, a good setup. The a high protein blend. So we're able to essentially utilize this to essentially make a high protein blend prior to adding it to a existing uh, 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 or, or another, another process dressings and sauces. Uh, um, if you're looking for uh, optimization of your texture, I think this is also another, could be another un unique or interesting application. And again, uh, uh, with regards to the discussion, where we see this as really a, a lot of opportunity with a lot of different unique processes. So we're definitely open for the discussion and open the test and, and prove it out as well. So from our end, we, we have an actual R&D test skid. So the actual R&D test skid, we have, uh, uh, have, have the ability to actually test. So that's the actual concept. Here's the actual equipment in the, that we have. So we essentially have a, uh, the powder liquid dosing available. We have a receptor for the, the actual mixing of the final product. So really, from our end, we need we like to be able to test, be able to prove the concept, and and go from there. So we have the ability to link the equipment together. So if you're using a, a couple different types of equipment, you can start with regards to using the M4E technology to mix the uh, the equipment, mix the, uh, the the ingredients, 
and then it can be moved over to a different cooker or do a different process where we can essentially manufacture and make that product on a small scale. So from our end, we've already discussed the, the, the wide range of, of, of applications. So creating emulsions, uh, mayonnaise, we, we think uh, you know a lot of the sauces and ketchups and powder slurry pre-mixes, uh, really the applications are, are kind of endless, but we, we definitely, at least right now, focused on food. There's definitely uh, potential in the cosmetics and, and you know different chemistry, uh, uh, pharmaceutical type products as well, healthcare. So from our standpoint, the, the advantages, the, the emulsion stability, we're, we've, done, we've done a lot of work on actually seeing uh, the actual improved emulsion uh, stability, no separation, increased gel viscosity, again, no molecular breakdown. So if you're incorporating uh, very long chain uh, molecules into the system, if you're running it through a high shear mixer, you're definitely going to see some damage to that product. So the wonderful thing with the M4E is there's no me mechanical shear, so we're going to we're going to definitely maintain those long chains um, molecules through the process as well. So uh, the actual unit itself requires no power. So there's there's an energy savings there. There's also there's no seals or motors or uh, uh, rotors to maintain. So you're also going to save on maintenance. Uh, very easy operation. We can we can also use it on a continuous process or batch process depending upon application. Uh, we're we're seeing a very uniform mixing and also in some cases a reduction in production time because of the help uh, enhanced uh, mixing that we're seeing. And it has a very uh, a small footprint uh, that that can be easily integrated into an existing system or process as well. So. So from our end, I know we've covered a lot of a lot of interesting things, a lot of uh, discussion points. Um, I think the way that we, that we discussed with Amy right now is we'll we'll, we'll kind of jump into uh, essentially a question and answer session, and I have a, a couple of just to lead off the the question and answer session, a couple of just more or less you know commonly asked questions, and that can can at least start the process and then if there's any other further questions uh amy can also uh kind of uh navigate through that as well and then i also have my contact information for uh you know further discussion as well and, and i do apologize uh, i do appreciate everybody's time uh, i know we've covered a lot of information in a fairly short time frame but we at least wanted to at least start the conversation show you the technology. We think that it's a really revolutionary, really cool technology, and it's really gonna help us, you know, with regards to moving forward, um, uh, sustainability, and, and also help us reduce our cost, production cost as well. So with regards to the unit, the you know, uh, question is the, the Venturi, do you need the actual Venturi? The Venturi is, a, is very important for the M4E uh, technology. It helps us with mixing and also helps us with disruption. So the Venturi is, is included. Uh, you do not need to add the, uh, you know, essentially where we have a port for adding products. You can, you can cap that port if you're just trying to emulsify. So you don't necessarily need to add ingredients through the actual uh, Venturi port, but the Venturi is important because it helps us essentially uh, create that disruption or break. And then that product is, 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 is brought over through the magnet itself. Uh, does the magnet require power? Uh, no, the, the, the magnet is actually a, a field magnet, so the magnet is, is, is permanent, okay? So the magnet doesn't require any power, and, and the unit, it's, the magnet itself is designed to last the, uh, the, the life of the actual M4 unit. So uh, keep in mind, I mean, the unit, is, unit itself is designed to be very robust, but as you, you know, depending upon, you know the type of product you run through the unit there there you know can be some wear but for the most part our units have a very long life and the magnets themselves will last the lifetime of the unit as well with regards to viscosity from our end we, we as long as we can pump it and generate a specified flow rate and pressure ac across the m4e unit we can actually test and use the unit so uh, uh, so there, there has to be a little bit of discussion on viscosity, but if we can pump the, the product 
we can run it through the unit it's and test. Uh, so the question is, can I use an existing feed pump uh, to, to, to essentially run the M4E unit? And our, our, our discussion has always been, well, we need to really test and determine the optimal conditions. And that will also help determine the, the appropriate feed pump that we need to use and also the, uh, uh, the type of uh, uh, flow rate and also pressures required. So we want to make sure that we achieve optimal conditions. And one of the reasons why we have develop the test equipment, the test skid is, is to be able to provide uh, real world information and testing on the actual product so we know what is optimal as well. And then the last question that we've always had is if is the unit itself scalable? And, and yes, the unit is scalable. We make a, a, a wide variety of different size uh, M4E heads. So we can start with uh, an additional uh, testing on our, our test skid, and that allows us to determine the optimum pressure and flow rates. And then that also allows us to scale up the unit if needed to be to essentially hit your production requirements. So, so with that being said, Amy, I think I've covered pretty much all of my um, uh, leading questions, if you want to call it that. If there's any other questions or comments from the group, I think we could could definitely uh, uh, field, field them now. I have my contact information available, and then we'll also make a, a, a copy of the presentation. Like I said, I, th I think we've covered a lot of information, so there has to be some time to, for you to kind of digest it as well. But we're, we're excited to be able to introduce the technology. We look forward to, you know, all the different uh, types of products we're able to test and work on moving forward. All right, wonderful, Seth. Thank you for the presentation. And we do have questions and comments. It looks like overall, you have many thanks um, in the Q&A for the presentation, so well done. Um, there's also several questions, but just one question that we did get was about getting a PDF um, or additional materials from the presentation. And so I did put Seth's email into the chat and so you can get in touch with them there and then i'll also add it to the follow-up email to make that as easy for you as possible to get in touch so we do have our first question and it is you did somewhat touch on it um, in your um, frequently asked question bit but just in case there's additional detail here um, they are asking about hydrating a very viscous starch solution that is a gel and I'm assuming the functionality there. Okay. Well, uh, Curtis, are you still still on the line? We we do have uh, Curtis is also a valuable tool. He's he's for a resource for us as well. He's he's been able to essentially you know conduct and and also design and put together the actual M4E. If I think Curtis, if you're able, if you're still online, if you're able to to jump in or maybe discuss a little bit on with regards to viscosity and also hydrating as well. Sure, not a problem. Do you hear me okay? Yeah, I do. Okay, so uh, for a very viscous solution, uh, as long as it's pumpable, we can run it through the M4E, and that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, we'd be really happy to bring in and run a test with your product on our test kit, and we can show you exactly what it could do. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Curtis. Um, next question is what kind of emulsion droplet size can be achieved with this technology? And I'll pose that to Seth or Curtis. And I know that um, Thomas has another engineer has joined us as well. So we've got the full team to answer yeah. these questions. So anyone's welcome to answer that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it, it would depend on the oil. Uh, and if there's a starch in the solution or not. Um, I unfortunately don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I know that we've achieved, uh, when it directly compares, comparing to a normal emulsion um, or a normal device used in industry for making emulsions, we came out about 15 to 30% smaller than 
our standard uh, than the standard machinery used. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next question: Is it expected that during the mixing process there's a non-null net charge, or else the mixing is completely invisible, if you will, to the permanent magnet? But aren't the elements in the mix mostly electric neutral? So there's a couple of components there. If you need me to reread any of the bits, let me know. Uh, yeah, please repeat that. Sure. I'll just start with the first time. The like the first section of the question is what kind of emulsion droplet size? Oh, that's the one I just read. Sorry. Yeah. They they framed it with that it's expected during the mixing process that there's a non-null net charge, or else mixing is completely invisible to the permanent magnet. So that's how they framed the question. And then the question is, aren't the elements in the mix? mostly electric neutral. That comes down to a large part of our know-how, how we designed it to work. Um, and without going into very much detail on that, uh, you know, we'd be happy to sit down and one-on-one uh, -on -one explain it to you. Uh, but unfortunately, without, uh, it, it again goes back into the know-how of uh, the our company and how we made the device. So it does work with neutral molecules. And uh, we do that by essentially creating a uh, temporary dipole moment. Okay. And so it sounds like here, just so you know, is that you're really at this point where you're really able to work with your customers to customize these answers or and solutions. So um, again, I'll make sure that email address is included so that you can get answers um, very specific to your situation and questions. So thank you, Curtis. Mm -hmm. um, another question that we have is, can the M4E also be used to manufacture water in oil emulsions? Most definitely. Um, it's actually, we have something listed to on our next series of tests in order to uh, add to our profile and to bring into our presentations. Um, we are only looking for the best type of recipe as this is one of our uh, areas we have a lot less knowledge about. So we're looking currently for an expert to bring in and they can help us uh, work through that test, but um, we have, but we're very certain that this would uh, work without a problem. There you go. And it looks like just one last question is how fast can powders be added into the unit relative to the flow rate of the liquid? Uh, that depends on particle size, actually. Um, so. Of course, as we increase the flow rate, we increase uh, back pressure, and therefore we also increase up to a certain point the uh, draw or the vacuum uh, on the venturi itself. And if we're talking about very small fine powders, we could pull them in relatively quickly when it's uh, much larger ones. It, it, it again depends on uh, the mixture or the powder that we're pulling in. Okay, that makes sense. All right. That's all the questions I'm seeing at the moment. Um, but again, as people think about this, I'm sure additional questions will arise and you can get in touch with our presenter um, to get answers to those questions um, when they do come up. So thank you, Seth. Thank you, Curtis, for joining us mm -hmm. um, to share this information. And thank you for everyone. Um, that has attended as well as participated in the conversation. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you as well. Yep.